offering now unto thy governor, will he be pleased with it? Or accept thy person, said the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto you. This has been by your means. Will he regard your person, said the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that will shut the doors for not? Neither do you kindle fire on my altar for not. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Now understand, God is speaking to the prophet Malachi, and he's communicating these truths to the priest. And we know the priest came out of the Levitical tribe. Huh? Amen. Praise God. Praise These God. were Hebrews. Amen. Huh? Amen. Praise God. But yet, he tells them what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want to praise my name, he said, I'm going to raise up some Gentiles. Amen. Come on. Amen. He talked about that back in Deuteronomy. When the children of Israel kept forsaking God and serving other gods. Right. And provoking him to jealousy. He said, I'm going to provoke you to jealousy with a people that ain't even my people. Who is he talking about? Gentile that would be saved through their through the generation and they would become a part of the body of Christ along with believing Jews who accepted Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And we see that take place in the book of Acts. Praise God. But let's go back here now. In verse 11, he said, for from, the right, from, for from the rising of the sun, even until the going down of the same, my name, my name, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. And a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. But you have profaned it. In that you say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even this meat, is contemptible. You said also, Behold, what a weariness it is, and you have snuffed it, saith the Lord of hosts. And you brought that which was torn, and the lame of the sick. Thus you brought an offering. Shall I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver which has in his flock a male and vowed and sacrificed unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. You don't offer God any faith. You don't offer God a corrupt sacrifice. You can't live in sin and think you can worship God. Come on, somebody. You can't walk contrary to the truth that's in scripture and think you can praise God with a pure heart. That's why you gotta take time out and deal with the issues in your life. Amen. Amen. Because you don't want to offer God a corrupt thing. When you do that, you know what you're doing? You're despising his name. I believe he told you that Over in verse 6. God is holy. His name is excellent. How dare we offer God a corrupt thing? When your heart is corrupt, your offering, your praise is blemished. Huh? Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why you got to get in prayer and, and let God deal with you. For the things that's in your life that's not right. Not just overlooking it like it's no big deal. Right. I believe, praise God, as, as saints, when we mess up, when we grieve the Holy Ghost because of our sin, my God, we should be weeping and crying before God that we sat in Him. Hallelujah. Some people never shed one tear because they're trying to be too proud. Amen. Huh? Amen. They're trying to be too proud. They're trying to look too dignified. Praise God. And you know those people's hearts are not broken. When David 
sinned against God. Yes, David was anointed. David, praise God, was used greatly by God. But yet David sinned against God. And David, you know what he did? David stopped to deal with the sin that he committed. He killed Uriah and took his wife, Bathsheba. And he laid with her. And from that union, it produced Solomon. But he took a whole chapter, Psalm 51, and with great conviction, yes. he wept bitterly. Yes. He cried before God. He was broken in spirit. He said, Lord, created me a... Y'all got to remember, David was a praiser. He was a worshiper. But David understood, I can praise God with my heart like that. Amen. That's why he said, created me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. He said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. He said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. But David was afraid he was going to lose the anointing. Who's, who's afraid of losing the anointing that's on their life today? Amen. Folks ain't even afraid. Amen. They can sin five, six, seven, eight, nine times in a row. You're not afraid of losing your anointing? You're not afraid that God will depart from you? These people in the church, you're dealing with a, uh, you're dealing with a different brand of so-called Christians today. Cause these folks are hard. They harder than a stone. Praise God. Their faces is like flint. Come on, somebody. Come on. They stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Hallelujah. Nothing budges them. Nothing moves them. Praise God. They can sin like water coming out the faucet. And if they was ever anointed, it seemed like they sure ain't afraid of losing. But David cried unto the Lord. Because he didn't want to lose that anointing. Because you have to have the oil in your lap. If you will be resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. When he returns to make up his Jew. To your name, I gotta have oil in my lap. Spirit of God to depart from my life. Praise God. I need Jesus in my life. I need God to rule and reign in my heart. I can't afford. And David, he cried out, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Then will I teach transgressors thy way. Yes. Yes. To the broken and the contrite spirit, God will not despise. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what the book said. Amen. Amen. How excellent is thy name. How excellent is thy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't want to despise the name. We don't want to shame the name. Can remember y'all, this is the family name. Jesus is the family name. Right. Yeshua. Hamashiach. Right. It's the family name. Amen. Come on. Amen. We're not to shame the name. We're not to despise the name by our conduct. See, most people think they have to say something derogatory in order for them to despise the name. No, just by the things you do. Yeah. You're despising him. Right. Offering him corrupt sacrifices. Yeah. You're despising him. You understand? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. His name is to be exalted. And who's exalting his name when you're living in disobedience? When you're stubborn. When you're hard-headed. When you're mouthy. God ain't getting no glory. You despise him. You, you're wearing the family name, right? right? Then why are you despising him by your behavior? Amen. Your mouth say, how excellent is thy name? But your body language, your actions, despise him. Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on. 
Y'all ain't getting this, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I don't think we care what we do. Because see, the devil has deceived so many people, they think they say no matter what they do. Oh, yes, they do. They think they say no matter what they do. You can't live after the flesh and bring glory to God. Right there, you're despising his name and you're robbing him. As a believer in Jesus Christ, it is never acceptable to walk after the flesh once God has blessed you with the Holy Ghost. He gave you the Holy Ghost because you needed help. You needed him. You can do it by yourself. So he sent the paraclete. One called alongside the help. Because the Holy Ghost can help bring this flesh under subjection, which causes you to despise his name. And then he can give you strength in your inner man to exalt his name in the spirit. Oh, come on to that. Praise God. How excellent is thy name. There's power in the name. Hello. You can just say the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, just a few times, and you can feel the glory of God come on your life. You can sense the presence of God. That's why you got to die to the flesh. Somebody said it's hard. Well, yeah, it's hard when you refuse to take up that cross. It's hard when you are lacking the anointing, amen, of God in your life. Because how many know you can't do it in your own strength? You need him to help you. And that's why Jesus came. He came to help us. He came to help us. Will you let him help you? Yeah. You gotta let him help you. Yeah. Come on, this flesh ain't exalting him. This flesh ain't exalting him. Your lips will say how excellent is thy name and turn around and despise him by your actions, by your disobedience, by your stubbornness. Praise God. Am I making sense in this place? Come on, somebody. Come on. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 1, the Bible says from sun up to sun up, from sundown to sundown, his name is greatly to be praised. That's why David said in the Psalms, he said, I will praise him all the day long. Hello. We're supposed to exalt him. Do you not know when you obey God, you're exalting him. Amen. When you refuse to humble yourself and obey the word, you exalting yourself above God. Here we see in Philippians chapter 2, the scripture says how Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But when it comes to them who say they are his followers, they can't even do what the, their master teacher did. When you follow in Jesus, you do what he did. You humble yourself. Not, you got to get in the flesh and speak your peace. Shake your head a few times. Huh? And thank you a Christian. You didn't despise the name Jesus Christ. You didn't resist it, the Holy Ghost. You refuse to humble yourself. You ain't no better than a sinner on the street. Y'all better hear me. Amen. You ain't no better 
in a sin on the street that don't even know him. And we got too many people in the church blaspheming, mocking, despising the name of Jesus Christ in their, in their individual life, in their home life, in their work life, in their church life. Y'all ain't even know Y'all huh? better be glad God ain't broadcasting our stuff on the screen one by one. We cut the lights on everybody gone. Because you'll find out hardly anybody really living by every word of God. That's why while God is giving you mercy, you better get your stuff straight. Come on. You better get it straight. Huh? That's why he said examine yourself. Examine yourself by the word, not what you think, because you're going to miss a lot of stuff. You're going to sweep stuff under the rug. And whether you sweep it under the rug, your house is still dirty. God <laughs> see that dirt under the rug in your house. Talking about your life. Amen. And these people in the church, they will, they will not deal with the issues in their own life. They won't deal with them. These are, I'm telling you, people like this that just reject the word, these are children of the devil. They're not following Christ. They won't even do what Christ did. Jesus humbled himself. And he became obedient unto death. Not until they got mad. Not until you, uh, you said this to me. Uh, not when you shortchanged me at the cash register. Now you want to get in the flesh and get an attitude and you roll your eyes and about to pop them across the... You, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You ain't never justified to see Because by every idle word, it's going to be brought into judgment. Yes. Yes. Your actions are going to be brought into judgment. Right. You can blame her, you can blame him, you can blame somebody else, but you're wasting your time. Because you're going to give an account of the things you have done in this body. Well, they made me do it. Well, you still won't give an account because uh, nobody can make you do anything. You chose to do it. You're going to give an account. Hmm? Don't despise the name. If you're wearing the name, don't despise the name. Don't blaspheme the name. You're supposed to glorify the name. Exalt the name. Amen. Oh Lord, how excellent is thy name. And I like what the book of Job said about this. In chapter 13, verse 11, it says, Shall not his excellency make you afraid? And his dread fall upon you. Every one of us should fear God. You fear God, you will respect Him. These folks are always trying to come up with their own stuff because they don't want to humble themselves and submit. And that's why so many people in the church will never make it into the kingdom of God. They may call themselves saved, but they won't be saved in the end because they're not enduring all things. They went back to the flesh. Now they're operating in the flesh, and they will not make it. You have to overcome the flesh. They say flesh. They want to talk back. Yeah. It's that flesh that want to lie. It's that flesh that don't want to submit to your husband. It's that flesh that don't want to go get a job, man. Yeah, it ain't nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's that flesh that want to rebel against what is written in God's word. And people like that, I don't care how much you go to church. I don't care how much you preach. I don't care if you're in the choir. I don't care what you do in the church. You was found in sin Amen. that you never dealt with. Amen. You thought God was just going to overlook it. You thought you were saved because you just said I'm saved. How many times I got to tell people, when you get saved you just entered the race. Right, right, right. You ain't attained yet. You ain't hit the mark yet. You got to endure. You have to overcome. God gave you a power in the Holy Ghost to overcome that flesh. To overcome the world. Amen. And to overcome He's going to let you go through trials. He 
said you got to endure all things. You got to press toward the mark. He gave you power to press toward the mark. And if you don't hit that mark, I don't care how many times you prayed in tongues. I don't care how many times you prophesied over somebody. I don't care how many tongues you interpreted in, in, a, in the assembly, praise God. It doesn't matter. You have to endure to the end. You have to hit the mark or you will not be saved. All your righteousness that you have done will not be remembered. If I can tell me, folks, I'm saved. Yeah, you saved. But you better overcome that or you ain't going to be saved in the end. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why he said, run this race with patience. Lay aside every way and the sin that so easily besets you that you might run this race with patience. And when you run in the race, there's a finish line. That's why the apostle said, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, and I kept the faith. He said, I have a crown made up for me, but not for me only, but for all that the love is of him. We all have to endure to the end, like Jesus did, like the apostles did, like the prophets did, like the holy women of God did, we have to endure too. You have to overcome that flesh. You have to overcome that bad mouth you got. He that keepeth his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. Everybody folks always getting in trouble. Get in trouble with the teacher. Get in trouble with your husband. Get in trouble on the child. Get in trouble with this person and that person because of your mouth. How can you be in church all these years and know these things and still fall? Right. How can you know the mark of the beast is on the horizon and still take it? Right. People know stuff is in scripture and still fall on their face. Yeah. And you just went over the lesson yesterday. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Oh, God. 